Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm close to the end of the year. The stories are not as sexy as they might have been uh, earlier in the year. But I was going through Law 360, and something jumped out at me yesterday. The headlines, FDA cracks down on vapes resembling Jack Daniels bottles. And they have a picture on it of Jack Daniels bottom bottle. And some rocket scientist apparently thought that he could mimic almost the exact um, trade dress and even the name of Jack Daniels bottles and sell vapes without somebody's attention being brought to him that you can't fucking do that. So um, I decided to read this thing. And as I read it, it dovetails into what we've just been talking about here. Because the first part of the problem here is intellectual property. I mean, if you haven't figured out that you can't mimic Jack Daniels or um, you know Coca-Cola or 7-Up or whatever you know it is on your bottles or your, your advertising, and no one's going to come talk to you, you bump your head. You know, I bring IP attorneys in all the time. Some places you can register trademarks and, and uh, really take care of them. But generally, U.S. Patent and Trade Office, you can put trademarks on hats and shirts and other kind of you know, merch shit that you can give away. That, that wasn't the big issue that I saw in this. Uh, the FDA sent a warning letter out to them. And when you read what they're talking about in this letter, they're saying that, oh, that alcohol is attractive to children. I, I said, wait, 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 let me back up and read that one again. That these alcohol um, resembling um, vapes are attractive to children because they resemble alcohol products. It's like, wait, wait, wait a second. You're telling me now that what you can go into your grocery store and buy off the shelf is attractive to children, and all of a sudden they're going to make this, they're going to do something with uh, alcohol. Like, wait, if you're not seeing what's coming, the FDA sort of, this is a tell that if they get control of this, which, you know, I hope that they move cannabis into something like um, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms and get it out of the, to see it, the um, Controlled Substances yeah, Act. TTB. But this is sort of a, yeah, this is sort of a tell of what the FDA might do. Because if they're saying, if you make it look like an alcohol bottle, that's uh, attractive to children. There are no limits on this shit now. Everything's going to be attractive to children. So just a heads up there. And the other thing that I noticed in this, which I have some tobacco clients that I never really thought about this before, but uh, they also warned them that you didn't get prior authorization to put a tobacco product on the market. I thought for a second, I went, wow, I didn't know that that was a requirement okay, because my clients have retail and the products come there through distributors and it's not an issue. But if the FDA gets a hold of cannabis, are they going to require you to get an authorization to put your product on the market? Okay. Yep. So, uh, when the government uh, gives you uh, a foreshadowing of what they're going to do, I think you should pay attention. It's like what the DEA has been doing with a lot of these um, messaging to companies. We're going to crack down on you. The FDA, if it gets a chance, will come in and step all over you in, in a form that's just as bad as what these eight uh, cannabis control uh, organizations are doing. If it's not specific in the language, like, oh, it's attractive to children, everything will be attractive to children. If you have to get permission of the government to put a product out there, uh, that's the game we've been playing the DEA to get authorization to research it. You're an administrative loophole. It's, an, it's a nonstop clusterfuck that you never get permission out of. Oh, um, there's my good news for the end of the year. Uh, let's throw it back at you all. What do you what do you think about this? Because attractive to children, getting permission of the government, uh, I think it's better than being a Schedule Three drug. But mm, it, could, it could be problematic for us. Well, oh, there you go. Back at you. This is this is definitely a, looking into the future. Like this, if this goes to Schedule Three, they're definitely going to be saying this about every single product is going to be attractive to children. And oh my goodness, if, if they're saying that alcohol, which is not marketed to children, strictly marketed to adults, twenty one and over, and, and they're saying that any of that packaging is marketing to children, that you're, you're right, Dale. There is no limit to what they'll be able to say as far as what is marketing to children. I you know what, Jason. I, I, I'm usually not on your side of this one, but um, it seems that our country is slow moving into Canada. I'm <laughs> telling you, bro. Opaque packaging you know, on you know everything. I hear a lot about them saying, I hear a lot about them saying 
um, package our children. <laughs> but what about the parents, right? Because when I was coming up, and I grew up in the crack cocaine era, I was born in the early 80s. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I seen a whole bunch of shit, like, and even through the crack era growing up, your parents taught you, don't eat stuff you see in the street from you. You just don't eat shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you just don't eat anything you should find. Like, and this is an era where your parents wanted you to sell crack. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, your parents was like, go outside, sell crack, get money. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and they still told you, don't eat shit that you don't know what it is. And so now, of course, we need to watch out for packages that look like everyday candy kids can buy or whatever, but still at the same time, right? Yeah. Why aren't we holding the parents responsible? Why is it that the escape goat is a kid can see it, pick it up, and want to eat it? Why we're not telling? Why we're not saying the parents aren't 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 teaching their children? The parents aren't raising their children. Why are children deciding to eat me medical marijuana products that are being brought to the school from home from the parents? Oh, a kid's gonna eat it because it looks like candy that he got from out of his mom's bedroom that he took off his mother's dresser and went to school with that he got it from an adult. No mm -hmm. one I want them to have this. Let me just go to the dispensary and say, let me get them sweet and sour patch um, um, edibles you have right there. Because no kid can walk into a, dis a dispensary exactly. and do that. They can't walk into a pool and do that. So you know what they can do, though? They can walk into a gas station and buy Delta 8 products. I want them to have the same energy when it, when it comes to sugar. When it, when it comes to That's sugar. Yeah. Right. When it comes to sugar, which is a, 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 a way bigger killer of Americans every single year. Um, yeah. Child obesity rates are crazy. Uh, well, people are losing their teeth and, and dying from from teeth infections and shit like that. Like, like why aren't we attacking the sugar industry mm -hmm. and all that oh, wild and, packaging? And guys, that they have? We call this in the law acting in loco parentis. People want the government to be your goddamn parent. Okay, and that's what's the problem here, Tony, is that people expect the schools to be your parent. No, your parents, your parent, they're responsible for what the hell you do. And if you go to school and you learn something that you don't like and go, you should go back and talk to your parents, let your parents deal with it. Don't act fucking stupid in school. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm not advocating violence on children, but there are a couple of things in my kids' world that were ass whooping yeah. offenses. And I don't think anybody <laughs> talks to their kids like that anymore. Tell them no. Fuck no. Yeah. I am. Look, look, I am. Remember when your mom came into the class and she whooped your ass in front of all the kids and you and you couldn't do The next day, you didn't come to school acting big and bad. You came to school with your head down because everybody in the class, seeing your mama just came in there and just whooped your ass in front of everybody. So when you went to school yeah. the next day, your behind was sore and you was humble. And a lot of these kids running around here, they're not humble at all. They're very material, uh, materialistic. They're very uh, uh, self-absorbed. And for some strange reason, they become offended when they hear language they don't like. Mm -hmm. It's the most self-centered thing that I could ever imagine in my life. So my yes, these kids today, they need a good old-fashioned, passionate ass whooping. That's what they need. My first grade teacher... Great. My first first grade teacher. She used to hit. She used to hit. She used to have us put our hands out, and then she would hit the top of our hands with a yardstick when we were doing bad. With a yardstick. Yeah, with a yardstick. We had paddles, Jason. Okay. The only time I got spanked, I was taken in front of the classroom with the guy I punched out, the little fucker, mm -hmm. and we both got three squats by the teacher with a big old paddle, and I took it like a man. He cried like a bitch, and I never let him forget it. Yeah. Okay. And when I got home, my mom was like, "What happened?" Mm -hmm. All right. I got a call. You got a whooping today in school. And when she found out who I punched out, she goes, "Okay, you get a pass on this one." But that's what happened to us. You fuck up in school, you get an ass whooping. When you got home, you got an ass whooping from your dad. Mm-hmm. They, and uh, I'm not advocating violence. But my mom slapped the shit out of me in public if I said the wrong thing. If I was a smart ass in public, my mom fired my ass up right then. You couldn't be on social media today with my mom. She'd hack crack your ass down and whoop the shit out of you for some of the stuff coming out of people's mouths today. Yep. Hey, uh, my, my my babysitter yep. when I was when I was a little kid, um, my babysitter she uh she she had kids of her own, and and I've watched her pour dish soap into their into her kid's mouth and make them sit on for hours with it in their mouth. Okay, because they were cussing or That's doing abuse, whatever. Man. Hold on, hold, on, on, hold 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 on. I'm about to, I'm about to take it even step further. She also used to make them kneel on the on the register. All right, you know, on the where the where the heater and the air comes from on your floor on that grate right there. She used to make them kneel on that for about an hour at a time. My father got abused like that. So yeah, my grandfather would put sandpaper on um, under his knees and make him kneel near the. Um, uh, the heater, the, what's that, yep. uh, the radiator. Yep, the, the furnace, yeah. And he would beat him. He would beat my father in front of the radiator. Why? With the 
please. I'm trying. Look, my mom used to beat me with the southern switch, boy. She would find any wire cord she could get, put the grease on it, tell you go mm -hmm. take a bath, come out wet, and come get it. So all I know is, <laughs> yeah, I grew up fearing. Adults, I grew up respectful. I grew up not playing with grown men. I grew up not disrespecting women. And even though I was a bad little boy, I was bad to my peers. I did bad things in and around my age group. But when I seen an adult and they said something, I was like, man, y'all better leave before they, I know what adults do. Yeah. <laughs> you just well, well, as, as a current parent, <laughs> as a, as a current parent you know, my child don't need that shit. I, I, I was, I had the shit beat out of me and I was still doing wild shit. And, and people take that punishment differently, right? Uh, people take it uh, differently. Some people, it does not reform them. Other people, it does. And um, not going to go back to every single one of those stories, but those are instances of abuse. <laughs> so whether, whether it was back then or, or it was current time, <laughs> <laughs> that was and that is abuse. Oh man, what do you think about so, this, I'm Rochelle? Saying, like, <laughs> what, what what do you think about I, I this? I don't feel Rochelle? the need to, to beat my daughter. Uh, my mom never beat my ass, but definitely let me know if I was if I was out of line. But I don't know how the conversation segued to uh, child our child. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, just, I'll just say this. I'll just say this. Uh, my stepfather used to beat the hell out of me, and when I when I had my first growth spurt in like seventh grade, I grew from uh, five three to six feet. He didn't touch me again, and I started mm -hmm. whipping other people's ass, asses at that point. See? So it can go either. It can go either way, and how you carry that energy can go either way. But I, I'll say personally, on a personal level, I ain't I ain't for that child abuse shit. I'm not gonna be hitting my kids, and I don't want a, a, a DCFS coming knocking at my door anytime soon either. Fair <laughs> so enough. Fair I will enough. not be letting taking my your kid... kids' phone away. Ain't child abuse. <laughs> Okay. Yep. Tell a little kid that the answer is no. The next answer is fuck no. And I'm taking everything you own because my oh, yeah. kids went yeah. to bed with a blanket and a pillow with no pillowcase on it. It's like, this is all you got, you little shit. I told you not to do that. Okay? Yeah. You don't have to whip them, but you got to have a boundaries like this. This boundary is you just got to fuck no territory. And now you ain't going to like what happens next. So you're sleeping in your room with no toys. You got a pillow. You want something back. You're going to earn you, it now, you little why, asshole. Why, why'd you still let him get the pillow? You should just took the whole pillow. The pillowcase and the pillow. Well, I did have a heart, you know, just a little bit of one. <laughs> but I had three sons, man. I'm telling you, my three sons, I had to teach them, you know, when dad, there's a daddy no-no. If you want to find out what happens, fuck around and find out. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. And the rest of the time, I loved them. There's very few rules. But you fuck around and cross those lines, you're going to find out that the old man's got a boot. It'll fit right up your ass. Is oh, that where you yeah. want to go? 